Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? The NFL meetings are going on right now, and as is customary, every year during these NFL meetings, every head coach has media availability. And if you're not familiar how this works, every coach has breakfast and sits in this hotel ballroom at one of those round 10 top tables. You know what I'm talking about? You ever been to like a banquet or a gala or anything at a hotel ballroom and they have the round 10 top tables with the white tablecloth? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Big room. Every coach has their own table, they eat breakfast, and there's chairs, and reporters can just come up and talk to any coach. Well, the AFC coaches spoke on Monday, and the NFC coaches took their turn uh, having breakfast while people bothered them while they ate on Tuesday morning, and among them was Dennis Allen. Yes, the same Dennis Allen who wore the wrong shirt to the coach's picture on Monday. Whatever. Details, not a big part of the Dennis Allen repertoire, as we have found out. And they talk, reporters talk to Dennis Allen about a lot of things, but near the end of the conversation is when maybe the most newsworthy thing came about. Uh, Dennis Allen updated Ryan Ramchick's status. But first, I would like to take you back in time. Let's hop in the DeLorean, get that thing up to 88 miles an hour. Flux capacitor fluxing. Let's go back to December. <laughs> Ryan Ramchick back in December told reporters that the cartilage in his knee had deteriorated, which caused him to miss significant playing time in 2021 and in 2023. You might remember that he played in just 10 games back in 2021, and then this past year uh, he missed a handful of games as well, did Ryan Ramchick. So, you're talking about a guy that has seen his playing time diminish because of the injuries, he's missed a whole bunch of practice during the week, I don't care that he misses practice, but you know, like he would basically sit out during the week and prepare himself to get ready to play. Well, um, fast forward, fast forward. I just want to play the harp again. Fast forward to the combine last month. Dennis Allen was in Indianapolis at the combine, and he gave this update on Ryan Ramchick. Yeah, look, I think Ryan's getting better. You know, he's obviously, you know, he's, he's, he's got a knee that, that he and we are going to have to manage. But we feel much better about where he's at today than where he was maybe, you know, a month, month and a half ago. Okay. That was great. Remember, the conversation around Ramchick after the season was he told reporters he didn't know if it was going to cost him his career. Like, Ramchick may be retiring early. And then all of a sudden, Dennis Allen at the Combine gives that update. And we're like, okay, okay. Maybe you can manage this thing well. Let's go from the combine to present day. And Dennis Allen gave this update on Ryan Ramch. I think it still remains to be seen. You know what I mean? Um, you know, at the combine a few weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about it. And yet, I don't know that I'm seeing as much progress as I was hoping to see, you know, at this point. So I think that still kind of remains to be seen. But here's the cool thing we got plenty of time. Um, he was also asked if the injury could linger into the season. Is that something that could be a concern? Maybe going into the season? Yeah, yeah, I think it could be. Um, but again, like we'll, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Mm. Sue... We went from Ramchick at the end of the season saying, ah, the cartilage deterioration, it could cost me my career. The Dennis Allen at the Combine saying, actually, we're feeling pretty good, like we can manage it. To a month later now, he isn't responding well. Best case is he's going to miss the, off, the whole offseason program and it could linger into the season. Um... Okay, first of all, this sucks. I hate this for Ryan Ramchick. As a Saints fan, I hate it for the Saints and the team that I love and all that stuff, but I hate it for Ryan Ramchick. When he was drafted, his first four years in the league, Ryan Ramchick missed one game. First four years in the league, he missed one game. In his second year, back in 2018, he missed one game. 
He was a three-time All-Pro in those first four years. He was arguably the best right tackle in football and became the highest paid right tackle in football. And then the injury started. In 2021, he missed seven games, played in just 10. In 2022, they managed him well. He bounced back, played in 16 of the 17 games. And then this past year, he missed five games. And as we talked about, had to manage it throughout the season, the knee injury. This, to me, only magnifies the fact that offensive line is your biggest need. Your offensive line is, by a mile, your worst position group. You also have gigantic question marks across your entire front. Andrews Pete is a free agent. Now, he stepped up big for you last year. Pete's a free agent. Hasn't signed anywhere. I guess could come back in theory, but he's not on your roster right now. Hurst, who was injured last year, took a pay cut and is restructured to come back this year. Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz are back. And Ryan Ramchick is a gigantic question mark right now. Like, Ramchick's career may be over. Maybe not. Hopefully not. But I don't know how you can approach this offseason saying, yeah, we're confident we're going to have Ryan Ramchick. Like, you have to prepare for the possibility of him not being available for some or all of this season. So three of your five starters are gigantic question marks right now. And of the two guys you know you're going to have, McCoy and Ruiz, McCoy's been a really good center. Ruiz has been one of the lowest-rated interior offensive linemen among starters in the NFL during his career. Your bad, your worst unit on your team is getting worse. Yes, you have Trevor Penning. You have Nick Saldaveri. I don't know that that's necessarily a great thing. Max Garcia, who played a good bit for you last year, is a free agent. Cameron Irving, who played in a pinch when Ramsey got hurt, is a free agent. Landon Young is entering the final year of his rookie deal. He's never been a consistent starter for you, more of a rotational piece. You have, you did not sign a single offensive lineman in the free agent period so far. You have zero free agent acquisitions on the offensive line. You've got Chase Young, Willie Gay, Nathan Peterman, Cedric Wilson, Stanley Morgan. You have not signed a single offensive lineman in free agency. So right now where you are for your offensive line in 2024 is you're hoping – Ryan Ramchick's knee is okay. You're praying Trevor Penning can become somewhat of a serviceable starting offensive lineman somewhere very likely at guard. You're very likely going to be drafting an offensive lineman and hoping that you hit on someone that can be a day one starter. Like, that is, it is like sound the alarm, four alarm fire, code red, the mo whatever you want to say to to underscore bold italics how crucial and critical it is your offensive line right now isn't a want or a need it ain't even a must whatever a must times a bajillion is that's your offensive line right now two for sure starters returning and one of them is your worst offensive lineman that's a gigantic problem we can talk all we want about Derek Carr, his leadership, Dennis Allen being a lieutenant, not a general. We can talk about an aging Alvin Kamara, a depleted receiver room after your top two guys, tight ends that haven't produced. None of that matters if you can't block for your running backs and keep your quarterback upright. The Saints' great run that they made with Drew Brees in 9, 10, 11, 12, that run, you had arguably the best offensive line in football where you had... A, a a pillar at center. You had the two best guards in the NFL in Evans and Knicks who were both all pros. You had, you had Streif, you had Bushrod. You were a dominant offensive line. That was the cornerstone of what you did. And the Saints have invested so much capital in the draft into the line, both lines of scrimmage. Ramchick, Ruiz, McCoy, Pete, Penning, like all of them. First or second round picks in McCoy's case, but in that year, he was the Saints' first draft selection in that year. 
They've invested tremendous draft capital, and it's unfortunate that it is where it is right now, but you can't worry about that. That's the reality. You have got to go attack the offensive line in this draft. Like, this solidifies. Like, there, you do not have an option at 14 other than offensive line. Like, so there is going to, whoever the best offensive lineman on the board at 14 is, that has got to be your pick. Like, I don't even see another option at that point. You hope Nick Saldaveri can, can become a player for you. You hope Trevor Pennig can find his way into the starting lineup. You pray that maybe Ryan Ramchick's knee heals and stem cells and all this stuff can, can make him a, a viable lineman this year for you. But how do you count on any of that? You got to go address this in the draft and you got to go add free agent offensive lineman as well. You, you just don't have an option right now. Tough news for the Saints with Dennis Allen talking about Brian Ramchick's knee situation, which apparently has gotten worse since the combine. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.